Hello, artistic allies and creative comrades. I've been meaning to do a video like this for some time, but my scatterbrain self just couldn't compile all the info I had, so I just needed to sit down and nail down my own thoughts, and I think I'm finally ready for this. In this video, I'm going to include most of the tips and tricks that I've learned throughout the years to draw basically anything that you can see. This includes, but is not limited to, wildlife, pets, friends, your own hands, and even cartoon or anime characters. If you can see it, you can draw it. Once you understand the fundamentals of drawing things you can see, then drawing imaginary stuff from your brain, like a two-legged horse with wings and a dragon tail, for example, becomes a lot easier. Coming from the online wolf girl, let me tell you that these things took me forever to figure out because I just couldn't stop drawing wolves. But if you want to be able to draw more than one thing and draw them well, there are basic fundamentals you can develop that can help with that. Or in other words, if you want to become a better drawer, drawer, drawer. Hopefully these tips help you reach that goal a little faster. They definitely helped me. Number one, references. All right, I preach this all the time, but please use references. And just to be clear, art theft and tracing is not what I'm talking about. Those are both very different than using references to study the proportions and the anatomy of what you're currently drawing. For this section, I wanted to draw something I've never drawn before and I don't normally look at. My mind instantly went to giraffes. Come to think of it, I haven't looked at a giraffe since I went to the zoo several years ago. The only giraffe I've seen since then is Melman from Madagascar. So these first sketches are a demonstration of all the easy mistakes an artist can make when they're trying to recall anatomy and proportions of their subject from memory, especially when you haven't seen the animal in such a long time. After struggling for 10-ish minutes, I got frustrated and googled some giraffe pictures. In my second attempt, I kept in mind that giraffes have smaller snouts, their neck and back are more of a diagonal line than a horizontal one, their body isn't as long, and so on and so forth. While I redraw these beautiful animals, it kind of leads me to my second point. Number two, sketch first. As you can see with these initial sketches, I'm using light quick lines. Don't be afraid of being messy. The idea here is just to get your concept down, your idea down, just get it out of your brain and onto the sheet. Sometimes that is really hard for artists to do, but I guarantee that is very helpful. Don't focus on using like hard lines and getting the artwork perfect right away. Number three, break down what you're trying to draw into basic shapes. This helps with so many issues I've run into. If something just looks off, break it down into shapes and draw out those shapes. Keep it really sketchy, but don't be afraid to draw through, which is just a cute way to say draw through the center of your outline so you can see the overlap in the shapes. It's not going to break your artwork. After all, you should only be sketching it first and you shouldn't be married to any of the lines you put down right away. Drawing hands sucks, but I was able to break through that obstacle with this method. It's foolproof and it works almost every time, at least for me. Just break the hand down into boxes and cylinders and then add details to the hand later. The magic of shapes. And don't forget your proportions and don't forget to draw through because that will really help you understand how all the different shapes of your hand lay together to create your hand. <laughs> yeah. Number four, light and shadow. If you're drawing something from real life, you'll notice that nothing really has lines. All the contours and shapes are visible through light and shadow. You can copy this effect by understanding the direction the light's coming from and how it looks when it hits certain objects. For example, fur looks a lot different than skin whenever light hits it. You can draw all of the different shadows in the fur and with skin it's more smooth and all of that fun stuff so you can really tell what the texture of the object is without drawing any line art inside of your outline. Again, don't draw the outline. Just sketch the basic shape using very light sketches and then use shadows and highlights to paint the object you're drawing. And you can do this with a pencil too. Number five, free online drawing tutorials. If you're looking to draw something really specific but it keeps coming out looking like a fish dog, 
unless you're actually trying to draw a fish dog, it might help to look up a tutorial on YouTube. There are tons of artists on YouTube that have a lot of experience drawing whatever it is you've never drawn before that you're trying to draw. And they probably have a lot of tips and tricks on how to draw that. There's tons of like fur painting tutorials. There's tons of lighting and shadow tutorials. Um, if you're looking to draw horses, there's a lot of tutorials on horses. Um, I don't really see anything on fish dogs. Anyways, there's more than likely something out there that can help you. Number six, fail fast. Just draw and don't be afraid to mess up. It's fine if you draw something horrible. It does not mean that you're a bad artist. It just means that you drew something horrible one time. Be okay with erasing work and trying again or just completely starting over and trashing it. I do that all the time. The more you mess up, the more ways you know how to not do something and the closer you get to figuring out how to draw it the right way. So don't be afraid to fail. Number seven, be your own biggest critic. Critiquing your own work can be hard, but it's a skill every artist needs to improve. That's why some artists never seem to like their own work, so all they can see are the mistakes and the things they wish they could have done better, but they don't want to go back and work on it because the piece would never be done. If you struggle critiquing your own work, which is entirely possible for most people, give it to an honest friend and ask them to be super blunt with you. Like, hurt your feelings blunt. If you're like me, this is gonna hurt like a whole lot, but if they're a good critic, they're gonna point out things that you probably wouldn't have noticed anytime soon or ever. So take the critique with a grain of salt. Art is objective, so some critiques are kind of stupid, but if they think something looks weird, they're probably not the only one. So just, you know, don't disregard what they say either. That being said, don't beat yourself up. Don't be mean to yourself. This can be very damaging mentally and emotionally. You can be honest with yourself and you can be open-minded to people's opinions, but remember that you, the artist, is separate from the artwork. And drawing something poorly doesn't make you bad. It doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you a bad artist. Don't take it personally and you'll be amazed at how fast you improve. And coming to the last point, number eight, Draw everything, or not. This one can be complex. When you figure out what you want to draw, there are two main things you need to consider. One, how challenging is this object going to be to draw? And two, how enjoyable will it be to draw? The trick is to draw things you like, but will also challenge you. Let's pretend you love drawing wolves, <coughs> and that's all you like to draw. Drawing something completely different with almost no similar physical qualities, like humans, would definitely be a challenge for you. But after you attempt to draw a human, you realize all the complexities are hard. Hair, skin, clothes, proportions, wrinkles. And all of a sudden, you aren't having fun anymore. Not to mention, your piece lacks the passion your wolf drawings had. Let's go back to wolves. There are hundreds of ways you can draw a wolf. Ultra-realistic. Cartoony. You could draw puppies, adults, maybe different species like Timber, Red, Arctic, Sparkle Dogs, and the list goes on and on. You might even feel compelled to draw a wolf with antlers in a deer smock, just for example. Now you have to challenge yourself to draw antlers, deer fur, spots on that pelt, and now your wolf is wearing clothes. How's it gonna fall along his body? What keeps it from falling off? Is there like a, some straps somewhere or something? All of this can be portrayed through your drawing, and it's probably going to be a challenge. Moral of the story, you can always grab a sketch pad and run off into the wild to draw pictures with real life nature and animal references. Uh, in fact, I recommend doing that. But don't force yourself to draw things if it makes you miserable. There's a balance, and if you keep that in mind when deciding what to draw, I guarantee your art will improve much faster. Thanks for watching guys. If this video helped you, don't forget to hit that like button and that notification bell so that you can be part of the early squad in my new videos. What types of tutorials, tips, tricks would you guys like to see in the future? Let me know in the comments below and have a great one you guys. Happy drawing!